sorry to open this webinar with extremely, extremely worrisome news. Just minutes before we got on air, I got a message from my good colleague in Mustafa Al-Quds, in the Al-Quds Hospital, the Jerusalem Hospital, in the middle of Gaza City. It is the second largest hospital in Gaza. They have tonight received evacuation orders from the Israeli military. And I will read to you, I have this confirmed from my colleague in on call in Al-Quds Hospital. Uh, the uh, Al-Quds Hospital is run by the Palestinian Red Crescent Society, the Palestinian Red Cross. It was bombed in 2014. It has been rebuilt and it is working full time. As of today, they received um, a, a, a threatening message to the hospital director, Dr. Murad. Dr. Murad was told by the uh, general, the Israeli ones, uh, to evacuate immediately all staff and all patients. Dr. Murad reiterated what the leadership in, ISIS, in the Palestine Red Crescent Society said earlier when they had the first threat. They said the same as the Minister of Health in Gaza said, they refused to evacuate their hospitals and to expose their patients to a secure death if they evacuated. Now I read to you the urgent appeal that I just received from the Palestinian Red Crescent Society. It reads, Palestine Red Crescent Society has just received a threat from the occupying authorities to bombard Al-Quds Hospital and has demanded the hospital immediate evacuation. The hospital currently accommodates more than 400 patients and approximately 12,000 displaced civilians who sought refuge there as a safe haven, in addition to the medical staff. We call upon the international community to take immediate and urgent action to prevent this disaster. I can add that my colleague, uh, I will not name him, he's an experienced anesthesiologist. He says that we have all together a hundred wounded and then another uh, few hundred patients. It is of course impossible to evacuate such a massive hospital building for practical purposes. Number one, number two, it is absolutely forbidden to threaten, to bomb and to uh, destroy the function of any civilian hospital. This is for heaven's sake. It's a civilian Red Cross hospital in the middle of Gaza City, filled with wounded patients needed, you know, ordinary medical treatment for all the diseases that people have. Nobody talks about that during the bombing. And as uh, you heard, uh, 12,000 displaced civilians who have been taken uh, refuge and shelter around the hospitals. We know there are thousands in Mustafa al-Shifa. There were hundreds, if not thousands, around Mustafa al-Ahli Arab. And the same is for the hospitals in the south. Now, I want to tell you that what has not come up in the news was that Mustafa al-Ahli Arab, the Ahli Arab hospital, was actually bombed about four days before this last bombardment. And they did sort of uh, puncture bombing around the perimeter of the hospital. Maybe some of you saw the pictures of the broken glass and falling down uh, roof ceilings and broken windows. This was a warning. Now, my colleagues in Mustafa Al-Quds in the uh, Jerusalem hospital in uh, Gaza City told me that they had severe bombing in the perimeter of the Al-Quds Hospital three nights ago, and this was repeated last night. I am, I feel my, my voice is shivering because I'm actually thinking that we are about to see another massacre with bombing of a hospital. This, um, uh, Dr. Murad, the hospital director, uh, his interview was right now breaking news on Al, uh, Al Jazeera. And he very calmly described the phone call from this Israeli whatever general or, or high military rank. 
actually shouting and screaming to him to evacuate the hospital. As a medical doctor, I've been working in Gaza for 25 years, on and off. I go to Gaza two to three times a year. I was working in uh, Mustashfa al-Shifa during the uh, bombardment in 2006. I was there in 2009, 2012, and 2014. I was not let in during the 2021 bombing. We have been waiting in, in, uh, here in Cairo now for 10 days to get in. Dr. Eric Fossa and myself, a small team from Norwegian Aid Committee, supported, by the way, financially by the Norwegian Minister of Foreign Affairs. He is here now. He is here now. The Secretary General of the United Nations is here now. He spoke to us all from the Rafa border. My friends, I have a feeling that uh, I feel we don't have time to sit in this meeting because we need to mobilize every possible political energy from governmental levels to all the organizations that are represented here to stop what is about to happen in Gaza City now. Um, I have been double checking and triple checking. Um, I um, actually received this uh, message from the from the directors of uh, the Palestine Red Crescent Society. I have it uh, here. Uh, it's in English and Arabic. And then uh, I called my uh, colleague, Dr. N. Uh, he could not take the phone, and I said, is it true that you have got an uh, evacuation order? And he replied, yes. And I said, what is going on? And he says, and I quote from his message on WhatsApp, we are staying in the hospital. There are a hundred wounded people hospitalized in the departments and about 5,000 citizens fleeing the bombing. We stay. These are the heroes. These are the brave hearts of the world now. And um, this doctor is a close friend of mine. Um, I've known him since he was a medical student. He's now one of the most uh, diligent and skilled anesthesiologists in Gaza. He called me three days into the carpet bombing. And he said, uh, Dr. Matz, my friend, my family has evacuated to the south. My son is studying medicine in Alexandria. I'm asking you if you can take the parenthood for my son if we are killed. I met his son today. He came from Alexandria to have lunch. It was a very nice lunch. We talked to his father, who is now my source in Al Quds Hospital. This is the situation for the families, for the healthcare, for the patients. There is absolutely no safe space. What the Israelis are able to do is beyond even my most cynical imagination. Ahli Arab, the Orthodox Church, and tonight, Mustash Falkuds. In addition to what my good friend Dr. Riyad said about the numbers, I'm not going to reiterate the numbers, only to say that the last update was 1,524 killed children, 1,000 women killed, 4,000 wounded children, and 3,300 wounded women. On top of that, which has not been talked about, are all the pregnant women in Gaza. Fertility rate in Gaza is, I think, around 4.5 now. There are about 10,000 pregnant women in Gaza currently. And there are, I haven't got it confirmed, but I think around 2,000 to 3,000 in the last trimester, about to deliver. They have nowhere to go. And um, there are thousands of diabetic young and old, because the prevalence of diabetes is very high. They have no insulin. There is no water to the hospitals in the south. There is uh, limited water, not enough to have uh, pressure on the sterilizers in Shifa, and the medical supplies are running out 
40% only was present on the essential drug list before this attack. And what we see is a massive, illegal, inhuman, and historical nadir of power abuse directed against the Palestinian people in Gaza and also, of course, in the West Bank, as we hear the killing is mounting there too. Thank you so much. But I'm 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 very scared now that what we have heard uh, is um, a precursor to another hospital bombing. Thank you, Professor. And I will try to just put. Can I just put that into context? Because the hospitals, with the brave hospital staff in Gaza City, are now the main hindrance for the carpet bombing and the ground invasion. So I think the Israeli military people. Are, are actually stopped by the fact that the hospitals are not evacuated. That what, that's why they did what they did to Al-Akhli Arab. That's the explanation of what's happening tonight. The next one will be Al-Shifa. We have to act now, my friends.